Hey you guys and welcome back to The Millionaire House. Today's video is made by special request from many of my Instagram friends who believe that my kitchen never gets dirty. Hey you guys and welcome to my first ever cleaning video. A lot of my Instagram friends have requested to see a video on how I clean our kitchen, especially with the dark cabinets. So today I'm just gonna share what I do on Saturday mornings and maybe you'll find something uh, that you didn't know or maybe not, but I'm gonna share it with you guys and I really hope you enjoy it. I always like to start by loading last night's dirty dishes into the dishwasher. It's really best, if at all possible, to try to avoid leaving dishes in the sink. Specifically when you have a stainless steel sink, the grime from your cookware and your dishes can leave stains and streaks that are hard to remove and the longer the dishes sit, the harder it becomes to remove those stains. But hey, we're all human and it definitely happens in my house, I just try not to let it happen too often. Next, I take all of the old leftovers out of the fridge that we aren't going to eat and empty out all that food and load those dishes into the dishwasher as well. One of my favorite products to clean with in the house is cleaning vinegar. I use it in pretty much everything that I do. So um, I add a little bit to the dishwasher load um, before I start it. Once the dishwasher is loaded and running, my order of cleaning usually consists of starting from the top and working my way down. It helps me to avoid duplicating my work. So I'll usually give the top of the fridge a nice wipe down and then I like to use good old fashioned pledge to clean all of my dark cabinets. And I'll link all of the products that I use to clean our kitchen in the description box below for you, but just do your due diligence when checking the pricing because a lot of the things you can find cheaper in your local grocery store. The next thing I like to do is spray down our stove top with a non-abrasive cleaner just to let it soak for a bit um, and get all the grime that's in there loosened up before I actually really clean and polish it. And here I'm just using a Method uh, antibacterial cleaner. It, it's not really important exactly what I use here because I'm gonna go back through and actually polish. This just helps to soak the grime so it can loosen up. Next, it's time to polish the stainless steel. Although we don't fry food, the dust paired with the steam from the stovetop creates this. One of the top three questions I always get asked on Instagram is how I keep our stainless steel uh, so shiny. So I'm going to give you my number one tip, which is wiping in the direction of the grain. This is so, so important with your stainless steel. It'll be a game changer for you. Trust me when I tell you this. This is true also for your polished stainless steel appliances and products. Um, you want to make sure to wipe with the grain because it allows you to clean that the microscopic grooves where the dirt and grime can get trapped. So wipe only in the direction of the grain or the direction of the polish lines, never across them, and that'll help you avoid dulling your product. I like to use stainless steel wipes that you'll see listed below in the description box. And then after I use the wipes, I go back over uh, the area again with the dry paper towel. Okay, all my Instagram friends, here's what our fridge looks like by the end of the week. <laughs> I usually have to use the stainless steel wipes several times a week, but um, definitely give it a, a really thorough cleaning on Saturday mornings. I use CLR to get all of the lime deposits out of our water tray there. We have very hard water, so a simple treatment with CLR usually takes care of that.
move on to the microwave. As you can see, uh, fingerprints pretty much end up everywhere on stainless. And so it's just uh, important to keep those wipes on hand because you can grab one real quick and wipe them down. But I start on the inside, I take the tray out and I spray it down with um, cleaning vinegar and let it soak for a while and then I go back and wipe it down. Now that the stovetop has soaked for a while, I come back and wipe down all that loosened up grime and then I use this Cameo. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but it's a stainless steel cleaner that is, um, it's not abrasive, but it uh, definitely has some grain to it, I guess is a good way to explain it, without scratching the surface. Uh, my old cleaners who no longer work with us, <laughs> um, did a number on this stovetop when they were first hired, um, just not using the right product. So it's really important to use a, a cleaner that's designed specifically for stainless steel when you're uh, cleaning your stainless products. And then once that part is all cleaned up, I go back over the stove with a stainless steel wipe and then wipe down with the paper towel, just like I showed you earlier in the video. We have dual islands in this kitchen, which I love for entertaining, but it is definitely a lot of cabinet cleaning that has to be done. Again, I use Pledge. I think sometimes old school is the best school, right? Once the cabinets are done, I get started on the granite countertops and I first give them a wipe down just to get any food or particles that are on the counters off. Then I spray it down with a granite cleaner and polish that I'll list below for you. This cleaner requires you to buff out your countertops um, with a microfiber cloth. And I actually, here's a little secret, I go back over my countertops again with a polish is, that doesn't have a cleaner involved. It's only polish, but um, it really makes them shiny. So it's one extra step that's probably not necessary, but since you asked exactly what I do, I'm sharing it with you. And before I polish the islands, I like to spray down the sinks, the vegetable sink and the main sink with a little bleach to let that soak while I'm getting some other work done. And then once a week, I'll try to cut up, up a leftover lemon and uh, add some ice cubes to run that through the garbage disposal. It helps to keep your blades sharp. And then I finish up with the same stainless steel cleaner that I use on the stovetop, the Cameo or Cameo, not sure how to pronounce that, but uh, it, it really helps to give it a nice polished look. And then I finish off with cleaning the floors, starting with vacuuming, which I try to do three times a week, and then daily vacuuming with Rosie, our Roomba, who is uh, scheduled to vacuum the highly trafficked areas every day. And regarding mopping, I like for our floors to smell fresh and not scented, if that makes sense. 
So all I use guys is some hot water and I add about a quarter cup of baking soda, about a half a cup of cleaning vinegar, and then about a tablespoon of Dawn. I like the apple scented Dawn. It really just does a great job cleaning our floors and it makes the house smell super fresh when I'm done. I try to keep that mixture in a bottle and I'll pre-treat the really bad areas and then um, let that soak for a second and then I go back over them with the mop. So I, I pre-treat the bad areas first and then I clean the rest of the floors. Basically I go around the entire first floor in a circle. Just before I'm done, I like to throw a little something in the crock pot. It keeps people from feeling like they need to come in and mess up dishes and all that hard work that I just put in. And that's pretty much it. It takes me usually the top half of the day to get it all done the right way. But then the house smells amazing. It looks really good. And um, we get started all over again the next week. So now this kitchen is clean and ready to be styled for spring. I sincerely hope you learned something new today. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite cleaning tip is. And as always, until next time, I'm wishing you love and peace.